Welcome back, everybody, to Raven Stars Witching Hour. I'm your host, Solaris Blue Raven. My wonderful guest tonight is Renee Colton. And Renee, we we're talking about so many interesting things. Before we hit the break, we were talking about the levels of healing for animals. And, and some of the things you were talking about were very, very interesting. Um, you know, insofar as the work that you do, your primary work right now on the timeline is really with animals and teaching people how to heal animals, right? That's that is correct. Yes. Okay. And I so mean, the human. Do, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I ha- I do. You know, people have to know how to find me if they want. You know, the human human contract. Um, I do work with human beings. I uh, hesitantly say I prefer the animals because they don't have all of the. I don't have to battle their their will. I mean, animals have free will. They absolutely do make choices in their lives. Of course they do. But I'm telling you, a human being, if they're not ready on all of their levels to heal from whatever dis-ease it is they're experiencing in their life, I cannot pull them through that door. There Mm -hmm. is no way. I'm tired of them battling. I'm tired of doing that battle. And so, actually, I don't think anywhere on my website you'll ever see that I work with human beings, but I do get called. Mm-hmm. And after I, I do ask a few key questions, you know, and um, I do work with human beings. Yes, I do. And, um, you know, it's interesting, though, with the animal healing. I got a call just before I left for Australia, and I'm, I'm actually still working with one of these cats that this lady called me, and I'm working with her other cat, too, but... Sometimes it surprises me how, um, and she's a very nice woman, and she's an amazing caretaker. She's a lovely, lovely, lovely human being. But if if I called you and I said, so my cat is eating pea gravel and thistle and pine cones, and what would that lead you to believe, Sawyer? Wouldn't you get that? that common sense told me that, well, your animal is looking for a something roughage to move something through its system Uh and B some minerals and vitamins that it's not getting from its normal food. (laughs) I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, but there's, so there's just a lot of people out there who really need some guidance on proper caretaking of their animal companions. And, and that was to me a new brain, a no brainer, but I talked to other people about it and they go, you know what? I, I would say that's just your gift of sight. I wouldn't have picked that up at all. I went, well, good thing she called me. So um, now I will work with her. So when um, she's now leading up to, you know, the point where, She's saying, and then me next. Now I haven't said, yeah, you next. I just said, no, let's just focus on your cat. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, I will work with her because, you know, through my interaction with her on the phone and through emails and her high level of really understanding what this is about, I'll work with her. Mm-hmm. I will. I mean, it seems a little arrogant maybe to some people, but, you know, I don't want people to waste their money or my time mm-hmm. like if so you're I honest. cannot impart to a person the philosophy and what their responsibility is like hey yes there's spontaneous healings yes they happen and they happen with people I have a long history of that as well but through the you know most recent years I've gone well, wait a minute why is it that consistently I see these full-blown healings miraculous level healings with animals and yes people get them too but they're consistent with animals i'm like it's got to be the consciousness (laughs) it has to be that the animal is not begging a you know people are usually begging right they're Mm -hmm. so desperate they'll try something they're completely uh, unfamiliar with and an alternative healing modality say and maybe they in on their inner dialogue is going, Oh, this is bull. You know, this won't work. This isn't gonna work for me. It's not faith healing that I do. It's not. Because if it was, animals wouldn't heal. But we're still dealing with beings, i.e. humans, that have 
free will, and I'm going to say sometimes that's just full-on resistance. Mm-hmm. I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, I don't, really don't, don't want to deal with it. You know, I think that it, the mankind needs a lot of work. He really does. He, she, it. Um, yeah, the whole collective needs a lot of work. And I think that the, the place you're working at right now with the animal kingdom is a good way to do do healing on a multi-layered level for the world itself. It, when you're when you're impacting the animals, you are taking care of um, your your caretaker to some degree. Everything. Yeah. Yes, and everything else because you know animals, even in our own homes, even in our own environments, whether it's inside or outside, we are. It's an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. You know, it might not be an ecosystem in the way that most people think of an ecosystem, but you know, you cannot separate creature from its environment, no matter where it is. And um, that includes human beings. And that's part of the point of working with animals is in, through the ecosystem, which is operating system is the magnetic grid of the planet, which contributes to the greater global biosphere staying in balance. And animals hold the vibration of the planet. Frankly, mm-hmm. we're so disconnected from it that I don't know that we do. But yeah, I, I know this are. for yeah. sure. Mankind's kind of, animals, yeah, I agree with you on that. Absolutely. And so do plants. And, you know, plants encompass 90% plus, more than 90% of the planet mass is inhabited by the plant kingdom. That makes them also mighty important. So when we're working with animals and we're working in localized, you know, um, ecosystems, it actually is making a shift globally with all life on the planet. Again, I go back to, please I, please don't get mad at me, people, but where did we get the idea that we're so almighty important, you know, mm-hmm. beyond these other life forms on the planet? It's like we're all one. It's all connected through the field. Um, there was another point on what you said. Oh, um, I don't know. I lost it. <laughs> well, you're making some there good points right there. You know, one said. thing I wanted to ask you real quick, though, I remember the last time you were on my show we discussed a little bit about you writing a book and I was wondering if you had started the book or where you're at with that you know I get reminded of that so many (laughs) times every week (laughs) and um, actually when I was in Australia this woman who was you know the owner of the farm where I was it was this fantastic place oh my god Um, she set in a lot of it and um she sat in because when I walked into her farm and I met her dog, Bella, the first I took one look at that dog and I went, Oh my God, that dog is human. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't see that in every dog, okay? But she goes, Oh, I can't believe you're saying that because we say that all the time and she told her daughter what I said and she thought I was some mumbo jumbo weirdo coming in to do this course and the daughter said to her, her mother, she goes, Okay, so she's the real deal. She gets that Bella is actually human. <laughs> looking, those are human. That was a human being looking through those eyes. Anyway, um, I um, what was the question? Oh, was this about a book? <laughs> it's late. about a book. So she so turns <laughs> out that what she does, mm-hmm. and she said this at to me at the end of the workshop after two days of listening to me, sitting in, talking to the people that were in my workshop, watching what I was doing. She goes, you know, Renee, I can't believe you don't have a book. You've got three books. Do you know that? Three. From the content that I heard you speaking about, she goes, this is what I do. I help people (laughs) get their book out. That's what I do. I help you take your information, get it in order, organize it, what needs to be said first, and get it out there. And by the way, ironically, this farm was not where I had my workshop scheduled. When I arrived in Australia, that's not where it was going to be. I went to do a site inspection of the place that I was going to be. And let me just say that the, re- the animal kingdom's cage was completely rattled on that site. And I got completely went off the deep end emotionally. Beautiful woman, nice animals, all of it, but it was just wrong. Mm-hmm. And I've never had that happen, Solaris, not ever, anywhere on the planet. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. Most often, I don't even see 
the place I'm going to be unless I've been there before. Because I arrive, you know, I arrive into any country and, and then I have to get through my jet lag and then I just show up and I, I'm fresh and it's on rehearsed. That's the beautiful part of it is being on rehearsed with those animals. I never know what I'm going to encounter. It was all wrong. Just wrong, 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 wrong. And, um, my, um, sponsor and the person who found the site said, Oh, come on, Renee. It's okay. It's going to be fine. I said, no, 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 it's not going to be fine. And then I called my animal intuitive, Robert. And he said, you're, you don't, don't worry. Don't look for another place. The magic of your workshop is you. And mm-hmm. so he calmed me down. Okay. Calm me down completely. I let go of having to find another guy. I went, how am I going to find another place in two days? Right. And, um, he said, don't look. Well, the next morning one just showed up. <laughs> nice. I like that. Power of that manifestation. The, by the way, that is the field at work. But you know what? I had to first, just so you know, I had to get out of the way. I was mm-hmm. all emotionally stimulated. Like I was off the deep end. Like, ah. And I, in that state, mm-hmm. nothing could have happened. Nothing. Right. So Robert calmed me down. I got out of the way. The field opened up. My sponsor was at a breakfast next morning. Boom. She's having this conversation and boom, this woman goes, I have a perfect place to lead you to. Here's the phone number for Bella Farms. Anyway, so it all worked out. Nice. But very, very what nice. she told me, the th- by the way, I finally got your book back. Uh-huh. I told you. It oh, coming, it surfaced? Right? <laughs> okay. It, well, it came back. I mean, I loaned mm-hmm. it out. It actually came back and I put it in my suitcase. Oh, what was I thinking? That I would actually read it while I was out of the country? <laughs> but right. you know, it did travel with me. And I love the fact that your book, it's, it's not, it's deep. I mean, because I've looked through it, right? It's completely, like, profound. Mm-hmm. But you're not taking on a 300-page book that's to right. get there. And that's what this woman said. I travel she light, said, Brene. three books. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She said three books. People don't want to sit down with a 300-page book anymore. No. Our focus isn't there. So she goes, you break it into three different books. So there you are, the field of work again. So, yes, Excellent. the book. But the book is going to be different than it would have been a year ago or six months ago or even three months ago. I mean, or the book. Because, you know, it's always my um, perception is always shifting and evolving. Right. And, um, the, you know, the animals have, I mean, the flora and the fauna, actually. You know, I used to be all focused about animals. Right now, I'm not anymore. I'm now about the flora and the fauna mm. on the planet and being sentient beings. And we need to align with our life on this planet if we are to really move into a lighter to open those signal pathways for um, bringing more light into our lives and into our world and to a new paradigm, the planet is not separate from us. Mm-hmm. It's all part of us and we are part of that. And with the state of consciousness of separation, you know, one time I asked my mother, she, when I was really young, she's gone now, God bless her. And I know that her soul could not have believed what she told me. <laughs> There's mm-hmm. no way, but I asked her if she felt like she was separate from everything or did she feel like she was part of everything and everything that she did had an effect on everything else? Her answer was, well, separate, of course. What do you think? I went, oh, my God. What I think is you can't be my mother. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Now, in her spirit, I'm sure she's way more. You got the bigger picture. Well, you talk about the, yeah, this whole system being connected, and I agree, but the bigger piece of it is that we are multiversally connected, and that's the bigger deal. And once people drop the density of is. the linear world, and they start expanding into higher consciousness, they're going to realize how synced they can be on that level, and then all the drama just falls away. It's just from my own personal experience. Well, so. I, I, I can't explain that very well, but I agree with you. Mm-hmm. that we are definitely multidimensional because I've had enough experiences in this lifetime alone to know that what I have experienced is not possible 
in this 3D or even just 4D reality. It can't happen. Yeah, that's very, very yeah. true. Yeah, on the work you're doing. Right. You know, it's so interesting. You're talking about your books, but I always thought that you would be, you would write a book on um, animal care. So I want to wonder, you know, you're talking about some of these people that don't understand how to read their animals. And I'm thinking maybe you can come up with something about animal care as far as how to take care of your animals or symptoms or just basic things for people. Because I can also tell you, there are a lot of people out there who love animals and have animals, but they don't know how to care for them. So I don't know if maybe that's down the road for you or not, or maybe that's somebody else's mission, but I really think that's a need. That's probably the simplest book for me, right? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I just see it all the time. People just don't have common sense when it comes to their animals. Well, that's true. And I heard a horrific story one time about people who got a bird. Mm Mm-hmm. And the bird was squawking all the time. And they couldn't figure out what the bird was squawking about. They fed it, and they fed it, and they gave it good food, and they fed it. And the bird died, dropped dead. Mm-hmm. But what they didn't know is it needed water. Oh, wow. That's that terrible. That is a true story. That's I, horrible. When somebody gets a pet or animal companion that they're not familiar with, like, don't? Really? How is that even possible? You know, you asked me earlier on if I actually had animals at the workshop. Mm-hmm. That is the most important. I have a lot of dialogue, too. I mean, in this, you know, anywhere from, say, 16 to 20 hour experience. But in actually New Zealand, mm-hmm. I had to cut it down to, you know, 13 hours. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. But I got it. But I got it done. I did. Mm-hmm. And, um. I got it done because it was a small group. I really only allow people into the workshop. People go, oh, you travel internationally. You must, you know, how many, you must just like get so many people. And I went, no, no, actually, I set a limit. I don't open the doors to as many people as want to come. It's like, that's it. Mm -hmm. I set the numbers according to what kind of a team do I have? Do I have teaching assistants who are qualified to be with me on this trip? What kind of a venue is it? How many animals are there? How many people can I accommodate? It's all based on that, not how many asses I can put in the seminar seat, right? Mm-hmm. And so, but the animals are a really, really, really big point. Now, I have been, it's been a really tough um, um, adjustment for some reason coming back from New Zealand. I was gone for just like about three weeks. And I came back, and I have to say, when you asked me originally, like, will you be okay by then? To have me, I went, oh, God, yes, that's like 11 days or whatever it is. I went, Absolutely. I, I don't know that I'm on this side of the equator yet. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, this has been the craziest time zone shift to come back into my own, my own locality. But um, in New Zealand, I, so I haven't posted the pictures yet from these workshops. But I do have a Facebook page. It's Renee, obviously, it's Renee Colton, right? Um, Plain and simple, Renee Colton. And I will in the next few days, plus I'm dealing with this, whatever this stuff is coming out of my lungs. And um, I'll post those pictures, but there's a a certain sequence of these pictures (laughs) that I'm, I'm calling... Down and out, down under. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because mm-hmm. it's like this person, this attendee, is interacting with alpacas. And she did the same thing with cows, right? And there's like, the, the alpacas are there. And one of them was so completely distressed. This was like, this was at um, the Kiwi Valley Farm Park in Henderson, New Zealand. Beautiful place. Oh my gosh. They do such good work there and they have fantastic animals and they're well cared for. And, but still, they had to bring this one particular alpaca that was available for us to work with. They brought in from the herd. Well, and it was kind of distressed. I mean, that's, you know, again, herd animal 101, right? Mm-hmm. They don't yeah. want to be separated from the herd. Oh, yeah. So here's a beautiful creature and it's like constant whining, like really crying, you know. And I don't like to be anthropomorphic. I don't like to put human emotion 
on animals because sometimes that's just wrong, you know, what we think. But in this case, I'm telling you, I was absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. It's away from the herd, kind of crying. There's another alpaca in there that was really well settled. And they're both well cared for. They're both healthy. They're both beautiful. But Louise, who was the um, person in attendance, one of the students, she started interacting with frequency, which is energy, right? It's the elf, evolved life force. Mm -hmm. And like this, both of them like dropped down to the floor. The little brown one who was crying constantly, like one, two, three, boom, out, head completely on the floor, tilted over, like completely out. (laughs) Wow. Completely calmed down. So those pictures really will justify themselves in that story. Like you look at it, it's like one, two, three, four. And then she's looking at me, thumbs up. And, and as soon as she stops and she goes, okay. And she looks at me, thumbs up. I took a picture of her after the fact. Both heads pop up. Boom. They're there. And then there's um, a video, which I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get the whole thing on Facebook. I hope so. Mm-hmm. Because there's a um, couple videos with the, this horse. You can hear roosters in the background. There are people walking behind this horse. There are people, the sweetest thing I've ever seen, which was this um, one of the volunteers leading a horse with about probably a three-year-old girl on the horse, walked behind, and this horse was so out of it, didn't hear a thing, didn't respond to one thing other than what it was experiencing from Mm -hmm. this energy. And the head is down. The, oh, my gosh. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I've got another one of another horse. It, you know, to see a horse with its mouth blubbery, its bottom lip, like, open and sort of just hanging there, that is not unusual. A relaxed horse, a baby, they have blubbery mouths sometimes, right? But when you see it go into full vibration, like, it is vibrating, mm-hmm. you know something's going on. Mm. Mm. Interesting. So there was a lot of, um, another thing I did, and I did this part in Australia. I had a bigger class in Australia, and I had, I still had a segment <coughs> where I, I need to give people a lot of interactive experience with the animals, with me and my teaching assistant working with them with the animals, and then more work with the animals, and then on day two, they're really full on 30 minutes them mm-hmm. with the animals. So that means one person per animal, right? So in Australia, I didn't have one person for every one animal for every person I had, but I did give them an experience in the field. So um, I checked my website. It's not there, but I do have this interactive experience of, what I call expanding your awareness through the feet, through through nature, but it's a field of awareness experience. And so I had everybody that didn't have their own dog, horse, or chicken um, went into the field, which means in this beautiful area in the back of this farm, one on one between themselves in the field to put their attention on the energetic connection, the connectivity between us and everything out there. And honestly, people said, oh, my God, that was the most amazing experience I had in the whole workshop. And nice. Like, well, little did they know, I was just keeping them busy. Right? I go, well, I just need to give them something to do. And little did I know, because I, I have begun my workshops with the interactive experience with the field, but I didn't really have time to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And, you know, midway through day two, I did it. And again, it just shows that, you know, the field is completely cooperative with me. I have a relationship with the field. It's a very strong relationship. As long as I stay in balance, it really works in a beautiful way. And that's, you know, sort of the lesson, I think, mm-hmm. you know, 
That's wonderful. Do, do they receive a certificate of some kind after they take the workshop? Of course they do. Absolutely. Nice. That's really wonderful. Yes, they do wow. because they're qualified mm-hmm. after the two days. Day one is for your household pets. It's for your own animals. It's for, um, you know, that's it. It's learning how to interact with this evolved life force. It's learning how to get in touch with it. It's learning how to recognize it. It's bringing it in fully into one's awareness. Mm -hmm. And that is like a full eight hours at least, right? And then day two is then you, you get all the protocols and dynamics of professionally all the questions that you really have to ask. I mean, when you're making that appointment, if, if, if it's that, no, if it's in the wild, that's a whole different part of the class because I do teach people what, what to do if they encounter an animal in the wild that mm-hmm. needs assistance or if they encounter what appears to be a household pet out there that needs assistance. I mean, there's all kinds of really instructions that, you know, they need to be aware of. You need to, you know, you need to, you know, walk into these situations with some education. And um, primarily the second day, though, is about integrating to the environment, what to ask the caretaker if they're calling you to book an appointment, what you need to know, what you need to know about the environment, what you need to know about the animal, what, what's going on at that time, how to integrate. It's very, very involved. It's so surprising for, I'm telling you, every person who's ever shown up has gone, God, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. It's not complicated, by the way. It's common sense. But well, that's a big well, deal. <laughs> that's a really big deal. It nowadays. is a big deal. I and mean, common sense to me is just something I've always had in this department. You know, so I assume mm-hmm. it's common sense. But it turns out it's not so common. No, it's not. And that's another thing, too, I was going to ask you. Are you doing workshops in the United States right now? Well, right now, if you've heard the news, it's 120s in Phoenix right now. Oh, so yeah. I really, yeah, <laughs> yes. I can't, uh, I can't. And um, I came back from New Zealand and Australia sort of with a clean plate going, okay, where am I going? So I'm probably going to Maine. I'd love to come to Colorado. Mm-hmm. Um, San Diego, nothing is on my event schedule. Not really. You know, I haven't really, yes, I will be teaching the United States. Let me put this out to your audience. If you would like to host a Healing with Animals workshop in your area, let me know. Chances are, A, I already have a venue because I have a lot of home bases around the planet that I'm welcomed back into or if it's an area that I haven't been to yet. I'll, you know, we'll work together and we'll find the proper venue. And of course you have to have a pretty good line on, you know, possibilities on people who would want to learn how to do this. If I don't have a good base in that area in the fall, I'm really, I feel like in Phoenix, I'm out of, I'm out of workshops in Phoenix until November. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's hot here. You know, so, yeah. um, Maine, I actually have a barn near Portland, Maine that I can use. And so, yes, I'm open to suggestions. Let me just say that. And San Diego and L.A. I have a place in Santa Clarita, Los Angeles, you know, in the L.A. area. Nice. Yeah. So, and I am also, yes, I am teaching people how to heal people. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. I did a presentation a little bit uh, preceding my departure for um, Australia and New Zealand, I was invited into this, uni- I don't know if it's a Unitarian church or Union church. Anyway, there were about 75 people in the audience and it was about people healing people because it became clear that in spite of my resistance, <laughs> there really are people out there who are ready and want to offer healing sessions with humanity. So I I can teach that. I mean, I've been doing that for 30 years too, right? So I went and I did this talk. And this is what happens when when people are out of their own way, all right? 
So there's 75 people sitting in the audience. I bring up a person to demonstrate, like, how do you feel this energy and introduce the energy. I did a demonstration of a healing session, what that looks like with the healing with a person. And then I took questions and no less than a half a dozen people. And I, I think it was more than that, but no less than a half a dozen people raised their hand and said, I really don't even understand a thing that you said. <laughs> by the way, I was told by the, by the lady who puts this group together that I was speaking to people who were really very evolved. And so don't show up with any spirituality 101. I went, great. These are my people, right? So I show up full on me, no filters, right? Mm -hmm. I do the healing session and they all, really a lot of them said, I have no idea what you said beforehand, but I will tell you this. No less than a half a dozen people, and I'm going to say more than that, had full-blown spontaneous healings in the audience when I was doing the demonstration. Nice. Because, Very good. Because of the field. Mm -hmm. Because of the field. And um, cool. it was great. So after that, I did teach a people with people um, course. And you know, based on the feedback from the people who came, because it was all about that, like, okay, how they do? <laughs> they get it. Based on their feedback, I'm going to offer it again. And that I can do in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and because I have a healing center in the classroom and all that and overnight accommodations and, and um, that I have people actually waiting for that. I'm going to say this. I will only take six people, six. Mm, that's that a good workshop. number. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, at my healing center, because I'm not going to go out and get a big venue and a big hotel. No. This is the kind of experience that people have to have a really close encounter. And, and mm -hmm. um, six. And so I have people who have interest, and in, it's the end of July, probably the last weekend in July. I just haven't posted it yet. <laughs> but I will be. And by the way, it's the same energy as, you know, I'm using with animals and teaching with animals it's just it's a little different experience because when you are doing a healing session with human beings you have to know how to talk to them like when i work with an animal it's like i thank them i love them i do whatever is appropriate you know to close that session it depends on the animal and the scenario barn where i am the people and then i'm done with people Again, it's the whole thing. You know, you got to you talk to them. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to brief them. You got to talk to them afterwards. You have to tell them what their expectations should or should not be. Um, most often when I was working with people, I was going, please, if you're going to pray, pray before you come. You know, do all that begging before you get on the table, not when you're on the table. Really? <laughs> I know. It's true, I isn't know. it? Very, very interesting. <laughs> yeah. True. It is. Yeah, so, so I am you, teaching you, oh, that course at the end of August. Oh, good. Well, I was going to ask the you. end of July. Oh, the end of July. Okay. So when you're yeah. when you're doing your sessions on people, when you're finished, do you do something to disconnect the connection so that they can't feed on your life force uh, when they leave and go home? Or do you ever run no into that problem? Actually. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. Not with this. No. No, it's sort of like, you know, it's a 30-minute session. Mm -hmm. And by the way, of course, primarily, I don't think I said this, but if I'm not teaching a workshop, uh, mostly if I'm not, you know, if it's not in Phoenix, because I do have people and I do have animals in Phoenix that I work with, um, it's mostly distance healing mm -hmm. globally. That's, you know, I get these phone calls, like from the lady, you know, like the cat. That's distance. It's the same. Actually, I feel in some cases like it's more efficient from a distance, mm -hmm. really, you know, because um, I, I've questioned myself a couple of times because one of the things is that my, the heart is, you know, that innate language, that, that energy that comes through the heart, which is also can be fear, right? It can be sorrow. It can be joy. It can be love. It can be fear. Mm -hmm. If I saw 
in front of me some of the things that I've worked with from a distance after the fact when I find out what was going on. I, I don't know that I could really be in that state of grace of allowing because that is really important to mm-hmm. be able to not direct but be in a state of allowing and allow, you know, the highest source of the intelligence of the universe, the, whatever you want to call it, to just come through it in its highest potential. Because as soon as you go and I, if I went into a place of like, oh, my empathy, just say it's empathy. Mm-hmm. You know, that is really feeling the pain right. and uh, feeling sorry for. That is you, me getting in the way that be, uh-huh. as soon as you I put agree. your attention on that suffering, you are directing to that area of suffering. And we know that there, again, it's the field thing. It's, you know, we probably won't see this in any textbooks for 10 years, but um, some of my favorite information is Lee Carroll, Lynn McTaggart, Greg Braden, um, Bruce Lipton. I mean, all these really, you know, front runners in the new biology and um, within the field, which doesn't stop at our unit. It doesn't stop at our body. It doesn't stop at the physicalness of the animal. It runs, it goes through us. It goes beyond us. We're part of it. We're in it. And between every cell, there's also a field mm-hmm. and that's DNA. And then the, every with within between every piece of DNA, there's a field. And so it's a whole body. It's a, it's whole body connectivity. It's not just treating symptoms. It's about wholeness. And so if I put my attention on, um, did you see that posting I had on my face? It was kind of, you know, honestly, I, I didn't feel comfortable <laughs> posting a testimonial on my Facebook page, but the promoter in Australia said, you need to put that up mm-hmm. to promote my workshop. Did you see that one of the dog asking? Yes. Yes. You know, listen, her life is whole. She's a hundred percent. Nice. But at, at no time that night when I got that call, she was, I went from a distance, even though she was in Phoenix, she was at an emergency room at a veterinarian clinic and they sent her out the door in a sling, you know, they carried her out to the car in a sling because her back end wasn't working. So they, they came up with the conclusion that a $2,500 from MRI, $8,500 for surgery. And uh, the caretaker opted out of that, called me. And um, by the next day she was running. Do I think that she would have been running anyway? Hard to say, isn't it? Well, isn't it? I, it's hard. I, I'm I mean, pretty sure your your abilities are pretty powerful. Pretty so. sure. Yeah. Pretty sure. Because <laughs> sometimes I do get in, sometimes I get information. By the way, and and that's one of the things that have changed Solaris since I've you know, spread my wings and gone free again, without any you know corporate uh, oppressiveness, right? Mm-hmm. Um, suppression of my gift because we were not allowed to ever tap into our own spiritual gifts and that work ever. And what mm-hmm. I'm saying to people that come to me for training now, I go, I will never say to you, do not use your gifts, but make sure that it's clear that it's from spirit. So sometimes when I'm working with an animal or a person, I do get information and I know, I know when it's spirit the way mm-hmm. it shows up. And so with that dog, when I was working on it, my left leg now it w- wouldn't have looked like this if you were looking at me because I was not empathizing and I was not uh, in any way looking for what was wrong. Mm-hmm. I was just facilitating. Right. I felt the whole inside of my thigh from my knee up into my upper thigh twisting and contorting and being realigned Hmm. and um and I felt stuff in my back so uh, yes I would say that Aspen's reality definitely shifted because I worked on her Mm -hmm. and and it shifted really fast and another time I was working on a horse 
that was also in Phoenix. I could not get to the horse because I was otherwise I was busy. And um, the horse colic. I mean, I don't know if most people know this, but a horse can actually go from healthy to dead in as little it's in six hours. Six mm. hours, healthy wow. to dead. And um, so that's that's another thing about animals. They don't have the timeline. You know, when you feel something coming on in Solaris, mm-hmm. as human beings, I mean, for some reason, we've got some time built in right. that we don't go decline in our health from healthy to dead in six hours, unless it's a heart attack or something, right? But animals, they don't have that comfort zone. When you have an animal in crises, it's like you need to get on it. It needs to be done. You need to get on it. In whatever way you choose to do it, it needs to be addressed. You mm-hmm. can't wait until tomorrow or three days from now. You just can't because you just right. don't know. But um, this horse had colic. And um, I couldn't get there, but they took the vet, they took the horse to a veterinarian clinic. They had sold the horse just recently, like within a day or two, for $25,000. It was in training to go back up to Alberta, Canada for um, rodeos, for, you know, a hopeful for national finals rodeo, it's called. It's like, that's the level of horses that this guy Tyson trains in Gilbert. And he colic. So they take him to Dr. Cooper. And Dr. Cooper goes, okay, 10 grand. That's going to be what, it's a twisted gut. There's the only way out of this, you know, is surgery. Mm. Well, who's going to pay it? The guy, the, the horse was sold, but they mm-hmm. still have the horse, right? They also spent the $25,000 on the wedding that was coming up the next week. Oh, jeez. So the barn manager goes, all right, I got it. We're calling Renee. So Dr. Cooper, you know, they load the, I probably shouldn't say anything, but they load the horse back into, you know, the trailer and the vet goes back to the ranch with them, hooks him up to an IV, explains to them, you know, don't let this horse lay down and you better be praying for a freaking miracle because that's the only way out of this one. And then, of course, there I am. Not in person, but from a distance working on this horse. And this is when I know it's spirit. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting on the couch at my healing center, you know, like a full hour plus from where they are, which, by the way, is nothing. Considering, you know, time and distance, it doesn't matter. But I'm working on the horse, and all of a sudden in my mind's eye, my screen, I see I'd never met this horse named Cash. So I really didn't know what cash looked like. But in my mind's eye, this screen, it shows up like a light body of a horse. And then I saw this hand with an arm on it, which was not mine, right? Go into the horse, like penetrate the light body of the horse. I saw what looked like, you know what sausages look like? They're all like knotted, right? A l- mm-hmm. Sausage links. Mm-hmm. They have like little twists in it. And so I see this hand go into this body and, you know, it's just a flash. It, it isn't even as, it's not even as long as it's taking me to explain it to you. Okay. It's just like a flash. Hand goes in, the fingers wiggle. What I see is sausage links because lots of times I see things as food. I don't know what that says about me, but the sausage links on furl. Mm-hmm. And I know for sure that healing just happened. I went, well, done. <laughs> well, very nice. Did. And so that was Saturday. And on Monday, that horse was on a transport to Alberta, Canada, because they couldn't get that horse out of their barn fast enough. And Dr. Cooper said, nah, it's a little too soon. You know, I think maybe you shouldn't, you know, you got your miracle, but me, I don't think you should be putting this horse on a transport to Alberta, Canada. Well, they did it anyway. And they had me do another session while I was in transport. And that horse today is in F- NFR, National Finals Rodeo. Mm-hmm. His time, his performance is better than it ever was, even after Tyson finished training him. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's a nice story. 
I like that. Yeah, it is. It is a nice. That's a wonderful gift you have, Renee. You know, I don't know many people who do that kind of work that you do. So I I love it. Well, you know, this person who was at that church group that I went to, we went to lunch after, and she said, "You know what you do, quantum, right?" I went, "Yeah, I I really can't explain quantum, but um, yeah, I suppose it is because how could it be that all of those people sitting in a room?" where I didn't do anything with them, had a spontaneous, complete experience in healing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I teach, Solaris. Now, what I say to people is whether or not they have those kind of gifts where they actually can see something. You know, another one was a horse in Maine that she called me 12 hours later. Don't ask. I have no idea why it took 12 hours. But the horse had been choking for 12 hours and the veterinarian had been there already and they had diagnosed the horse. It was a mini with a hard block, something stuck in the throat. And, um, well, she didn't really think about calling me from Maine to Phoenix until it was eight thirty here. So that means it's 1130 in Maine when she was loading Brock up into the trailer to transport him for two and a half hours to an emergency veterinarian clinic for surgery. And she said, so this has been going on for 12 hours, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I need you to work on Brock. And I went, okay. And I didn't beat her up right away, you know, about the 12 hours. But I went to work on Brock. And when I was working on Brock, again, it was one of my, it was almost like a picture in static, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It was like static. And then this image comes through the static and I saw what looked to me like a piece of bark lodged across the throat. How would I know what this inside of a throat looks like? I have no idea, but I knew that's what I was looking at. Mm-hmm. And it was like, flash, gone. So I went, oh, I wonder if Brock, you know, got a piece of bark in his mm-hmm. head this morning. So... She called me the next morning, uh, actually texted me. She goes, okay, you've done it again. <clears throat> she said, by the time I got Brock to the clinic, he, A, wasn't choking. B, we unloaded him, took him into the clinic because the whole staff was there, right, for surgery in the middle of the night. Everybody was called in. They scoped his throat. There was, A, no evidence. There was nothing in his throat. There, he had been diagnosed with that in his throat. And B, more miraculously, there wasn't any evidence in his throat that showed he had been choking for 12 hours. You know what that would look like, right? Mm-hmm. A hard block in a throat choking for right. 12 hours, you're going to have some, you know, problems. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I told her what I saw. And this was probably the, the moment as I was purging all of my stuff from being part of that you know, oppressive, suppressive reality with a corporation that teaches healing for business, right? Um, That um, I knew that the gifts were okay. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) There was a time when I went, whoa, I'm not supposed to see that. So that's when I knew that sometimes it's just appropriate. You can't ignore it. So when I told her what I saw, And what I thought it was, I said, I don't know what it was, but I know what it looked like. She said, oh, no, that wasn't Barker Day. I know exactly what that was. And she sent me a shot of a crumbled um, horse cookie that they make Mm. that Mm -hmm. you can buy, like, you know, apple, whatever. And it was broken in half, and it looked exactly like Bark. And she goes, it's my niece and nephew. I've told them. Do not give Brock those treats. So thank you so much. It cost me a lot of money not to call you right away. (laughs) But she said, now I'm going to have to remind them that this is what happened. This is what it cost me. And this is what they can never do again. So that information becomes really important. So now when I'm teaching this class, Mm -hmm. without making people feel like, oh, God, I'll never be able to do that because I don't have those gifts. Well, I say to that, hello, I didn't come this way. I, I grew into this mm-hmm. and you can evolve in this way too. But even if you never do, the fact of the matter is 
to facilitate the healings at the highest level and the optimum outcome, you don't have to have these gifts. But I will never say to people, if you have any of these clairs activated, don't use them. It has no place here. I just will make a point that you've got to definitively know. Did you go looking for it? Did you look? Is it coming from your linear mind or did it, was it a communication from spirit? And I know when it is. So Uh I don't ever walk into a healing session looking for what's wrong. Right. Ever. Yep, that's a good way to do it. Just, Just do it. Just run the energy. But I can help people develop that. I mean, because I mean, if, it, if, if through dialogue, if I have an understanding like, oh, because I actually have a few of those clairs active, you know, I do more than one of them. They're not on demand, though. And, you know, the ranch manager where I live took me on a trek through the ranch about a month ago. And he goes, what do you feel here? What do you feel here? What do you feel here? And it was like, oh, my God, this is not how I don't. I said, don't ever do that to me again. Don't ever. That Mm -hmm. is not how I work. I cannot stand there and just like go in through. That's a left brain activity. That's not where it comes from. Not for me anyway. I mean, I'm not in that place where it's not on demand for me. It's just not. It either shows up or it doesn't. And I accept if it does, it's appropriate to share that information. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And that's really where I like to get people to. In my uh-huh. class, like you know what, you can develop this, but you know, it's a that's another reason why my classes are small. If uh-huh. I have a hundred people or four hundred people, say for instance, in a class, how in the that's world so can I touch each person as right. deeply as I do? Now there are there are people, Solaris, that say it's so inefficient because I'm not really tapping, you know, the full potential of people who would want my training. I'm going, well, you know what, I am only one person. But certainly there's more people out there that can be prepared to do this. And besides, mm-hmm. I can do lots of classes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right now, no, I, like like, I don't. Yeah, got to keep them small. Oh, I agree. Yeah. And we're just about out of time here, Renee. It's, it's gone by so quickly. But I have to tell you, thank you so much for joining us because it's been awesome to have you on and have you back over here. And also, if people want to connect with you and get a class or, or find out what's going on, which, which is the best site to do that? Well, actually, I did not give you an email address, but um, okay. let's use ReneeColton.com would be the best website. Okay. And animals, if they want to email me, that that is on there. It is listed on the homepage. If you want, you know, immediate attention, email me at. It's animals, as in more than one, R-A-R-E, waiting, W-A-I-T-I-N-G at MSN.com. But it is on ReneeColson.com. It's also AnimalWellness.World. Same site, two different. Excellent. So do you do cult, uh, like a consult? If somebody has an emergency with their animal, they can call you or contact you and get a consult? Yes. Okay, excellent. Absolutely. That phone number is area code 623-465-3000. And I tell people this all over the world. I'm really easy to get a hold of. I answer my phone. I answer my emails. I'm really focused on, you know, this mission with people who are seeking this service. So I'm here. You do wonderful work, I must say. It's been, like I said, I'm really glad that you're back on the show. And I have to have you back again because, you know, you've had contactee experiences and we didn't even get into that part. But, yeah, you have a very uh, multifaceted life. It's very, very interesting. But I love the work you're doing with the animals. I never thought I could do two hours again. I really thought, oh, what am I going to talk about? <laughs> oh, sure you can. But yeah, no, it's been yeah. great, and, and uh, we'll have more discussions, of course, and I'll have to get out there. I, I just love to catch one of your seminars, so I'm going to have to get out there next yeah, time and do it. Yeah, wait till it cools out. Yep. Oh, definitely. Yes. Yeah. I'm definitely not. November. Wired. Yeah, it's not my style. November. They're in 120, 30, <laughs> whatever the hell it is. No, well, uh, one, no November. We'll November's November a good time. Yeah. Excellent. Very, yeah. very good. Well, All it's right, been wonderful. Well, thank you so yeah. much. My pleasure, and I just want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Always good to see everybody in the chat room. And uh, just I hope everybody has a really nice week out there. Stay tuned for Shiny Side Out with David Dunger and Mickey coming up next to send you on into the night for dinner, as they always do with their wonderful show. They're talking about dimensional travelers. Now, that sounds pretty darn cool. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. And Renee, did you hang up yet or are you still there? 
No, I'm uh, no, I'm oh, thinking we should right. have a chat after this. Yeah, we do, we do, and also um, we're still live, but we just have a few more minutes here. Do you have anything you want to add or just say to our listeners before we we sign out of here? You have about a minute. Well, now. I just really okay. I just think that you know, just bringing the awareness to um, people to really be aware of of their emotions, and if something starts upwelling and it's not a positive emotion do something to level that back out and bring it into balance and shift gears to put out into the field a positive emotion. Because again, anybody who's listening to your programming has got to have a vigorous energetic footprint. Has to. Oh yeah. They're very awake. They're very awake in consciousness. Right. Really very <laughs> There's no doubt. And of course, uh, you need to send some energy to the, that throat chakra of yours. I know. It's like... I know it's um I think it was still from the flight, honestly. It probably cooking. was. There's a lot of crap in the air too yeah. though. I noticed that there's been some stuff going on too and I just, Yeah, I don't uh, usually get sick, but I'm telling you this has started like coughing up in the last few days and it's uh How was the weather over there? Was it pretty nice when you were there? Oh my well it was winter, but I was in Queensland. So oh, okay. that's the Gold Coast. So that's more like our summer, right? Mm-hmm. But in New Zealand, it was winter. And let me just tell you that I just, uh, I've always loved Australia. I've been to Australia so many times. This is my first trip to New Zealand. I had the privilege and the honor to actually stay in a private residence with this woman named Louise, who, oh my God. We're out of time, Renee. We've got to to let go here, but we're out of time. We'll we'll connect off air. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend.